We turn today to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1 and verse 1. This is the beginning of the New Testament portion of the Bible, and it's very significant that it begins with these words, the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. If you turn to the Old Testament, we can say in a sense, with the beginning of creation and the fall of man, there is the record as we read in Genesis 5 verse 1 of the book of the generations of Adam. Here are two generations, the book of the generations of Adam and the book of the generations of Jesus Christ in Matthew 1.1. 1, 1. Two different races, one human, the other divine. Everyone originally begins in the book of the generations of Adam. But some, by repentance and faith, are transferred to the book of the generations of Jesus Christ. And here in Matthew's Gospel, we actually have a record of the genealogy of Joseph, the husband of Mary, as we read in verse 16 of Matthew 1, of whom was born Jesus. And we see that Joseph was of the kingly line of David and the other kings that followed David on the throne that we read of. Verse 6, we read of David. And verse 7 onwards, the other kings, Solomon, Azza, Uzziah, Hezekiah, Josiah. And then after the deportation to Babylon, Zerubbabel, verse 12. These are the leaders, the kings and the leaders of God's people, Israel in the Old Testament. And in a sense we could say that if there was a kingdom and a king in Israel at that time, Joseph would have been entitled to it. And after his death, his legal son, Jesus. So this is to prove that Jesus is the heir to the throne of David, legally through his foster father, Joseph. In Luke's Gospel, chapter 3, we have another genealogy, slightly different, because that is the genealogy of Mary, the mother of Jesus, who also descended from David. There we read in Luke, chapter 3, in verse 23, Jesus himself was about 30 years of age, being supposedly, or as it was being thought, the son of Joseph. And then it says in the rest of that verse, the of Eli. And the word son in italics means that it's been filled in. He was actually the son-in-law of Eli, who was born of Mathat, who was born of Levi, and so on. That goes all the way up to David. In verse 31, but this time, as we read in verse 31 of Luke 3, not through David's son Solomon, as we read in Matthew 1 and verse 7, but through David's son Nathan. And so, from Adam to David, the genealogies were the same for Joseph and Mary. But at David, they branch off into two trees, Mary coming through David's son Nathan, and Joseph coming through David's son Solomon. So, Jesus was physically born of the seed of David, which is an important thing because in Romans chapter 1, Paul says this has some connection with the gospel. In Romans in chapter 1, he says in verse 1 to 3 that this gospel of God which he promised beforehand through his prophets and the Holy Scriptures, concerns his son, that is Jesus Christ, who was born of the seed of David according to the flesh. So from these two genealogies in Matthew and Luke, we find one thing, and that is that Jesus was the legal heir to the throne of David through Joseph at the same time 
physically of the seed of David through Mary. He came in the flesh of David, which is our flesh. And turning back to Matthew 1, we see the genealogy beginning with Abraham. Matthew was primarily writing to the Jews, and so he begins with Abraham. Luke, writing to the world in general, begins with Adam in his genealogy. And in Matthew 1, verse 2 onwards, we have the genealogy of Joseph all the way up to verse 16. And we don't want to look at all the names, but there are some significant ones that we could look at. There are four women mentioned here, and it's very significant to see something about these four women mentioned in this genealogy. The first woman mentioned is Tamar. In um, Genesis 1, in Matthew 1, verse 3. And it says here that to Tamar was born Perez. And to Perez was born Hesron. Now, if you turn to the Old Testament in Genesis chapter 38, you read the story of how Perez was born to Tamar. And it's a pretty unsavory story of how Tamar disguised herself as a prostitute and committed adultery with her own father-in-law Judah and had a son called Perez. And it's very significant that Jesus, who came to save sinners, who did not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance, chose to come through such a line. We must remember that none of us ever had the choice as to which family we would be born into. When we were born, we were born into a family which we had no choice of at all. There was only one person ever born into this world who could choose the family and the place and the time where he would be born, and that was Jesus Christ. And he chose a family line, a family tree, which consisted of a shameful event that produced a son through Tamar. The second woman mentioned here in Matthew 1 is verse 5. In verse 5, to Salmon was born Boaz by Rahab. Rahab we know from the book of Joshua and the first six chapters was the town prostitute of Jericho who later on married Salmon. And to Rahab and Salmon was born Boaz who married Ruth. Here's another woman mentioned and again one who had a very evil background. A third woman mentioned is Ruth in Matthew chapter 1 verse 5. And the significant thing about Ruth was that she was not even a Jewess. She was not an Israelite. She was a Moabite. You read that in the book of Ruth. And uh, if we were to look back into Genesis chapter 19 and verse 34 to 37... You find there how Moab was born, the ancestor of Ruth. Again, a very shameful origin with Lot's daughters committing adultery with their own father. That was how Moab was born. And through Moab came Ruth. That's part of the family tree of Jesus Christ. The fourth woman mentioned here is in verse 6. Her name is not mentioned. We know it's Bathsheba who had been the wife of Uriah. And we know that shameful story from the second book of Samuel where David committed adultery with Bathsheba and killed her husband Uriah. This is a very significant thing 
that there is some form of immorality in the line of these four women mentioned in the genealogy of Jesus Christ. The reason I mention that is because many Christians are very often proud of their family line. They are proud that they belong to a particularly significant and dignified family line. Here was one person who could have chosen the most dignified family line in Israel and who didn't choose it. Chose to come through a sinful line because he came to save sinners. Because he came to help the least and the lowest. And that should shatter any pride that any of us have in our family line. Jesus humbled himself to the lowest place to bring salvation. And he says to us, follow me. Here is where we can profitably examine ourselves so that if we really want to be disciples of Jesus Christ, we never again think in terms of what makes us superior to other human beings. Anyone who has such feelings can never be a disciple of Jesus Christ.